Hi everyone, I'm John. Welcome to Quest Marker. Today I want to talk about video games as symbols for how we view and interpret war. How games like film can embolden conflict. How the desire to be quote-unquote gritty and realistic creates shallowness and irony. How all of this makes Medal of Honor 2010 a fascinating and problematic time capsule of the war in Afghanistan and the greatest example of the problems with modern military shooters. A few quick disclaimers. We're talking about politics and video games. Criticisms levied at the war in Afghanistan is not meant to be criticisms levied against the veterans who served. And I'm going to be spoiling Medal of Honor 2010 and talking in pretty broad strokes about some other modern military shooters. So can't say I never warned you. Medal of Honor 2010 is one of the few games that the Canadian government has ever criticized. At launch, one of these multiplayer factions was the Taliban. A gamer could play as a Taliban fighter. Peter McKay, then Minister of Defense, said back in August 2010, the game was quote-unquote wrong, because the game trivializes the loss of Canadian lives at the hands of the Taliban. Furthermore, Medal of Honor was removed from purchase at most American military bases for similar reasons. But I didn't play the multiplayer mode. The option to play as a Taliban fighter was patched out by the developers. I want to focus primarily on the single-player campaign, the four-hour tragedy that I dragged myself through. Games are representations and reflections of the real world. Call of Duty and Battlefield games set in the modern era use Russian and Middle Eastern enemies as simply an extension of 20th century American foreign policy. Medal of Honor makes no attempt to make their story metaphorical of the Afghan war. It simply just puts the player right in the thick of the invasion in the fall of 2001. Where the invasion of Afghanistan was predicated on the destruction of Al-Qaeda to retaliate against the September 11th attacks, the game decides to make a curious left turn about the kind of narrative that it's spinning here in the war effort. Because the antagonist of Medal of Honor is not Al-Qaeda or the Taliban, it's actually the American institution back home, unable to make the smart decisions to improve the lives and missions of the soldiers. This is an important narrative factor when looking at this game and it's an interpretation of the war. While the player might shoot Chechens, Arabs, Pashtuns, and other Muslims through rural Afghanistan, this scene here actually demonstrates and encapsulates the narrative drama and the narrative conflict of the game. One, do you have eyes on that convoy of vehicles in grid 160959? Yes, sir. Friendlies? Well, they're not responding to our glint, sir. Synchronizing our weapons with our clear. Well, we've had reports of enemy ambushes in the area. Are they enemy or friendly? Not sure, sir. And they're non-responsive to our glint, confirm? Negative, no glint. Are you registering weapons? Affirmative, sir. Well, then that's a high threat area with unidentified vehicles registering weapons. Sir, we don't have positive ID on those Reaper vehicles. Reaper 3-1, you are cleared hot on those vehicles. Bottom, this is Colt 2-1. We seem to be taken through fire. Do you have eyes on our grid? They're coming, they're coming! Bottom, we have been engaged! Request immediate assistance. Cease fire, cease fire, those are friendlies. Who is this? Sir, we've lost Task Force Rebel. They're heading back to Gardez. The Afghans don't make or break this, Drucker. Send the Rangers into the valley. With the AFO teams having destroyed the targets, there'll be hardly any resistance. Sir, the AFO teams can continue calling in airstrikes. Send in the Rangers. Are we clear? Lima Charlie, sir. There are two things happening here. First, Colonel Drucker is, you know, the very sympathetic and, and insightful military commander that's on the ground in Afghanistan, and he's supporting the addition of local Afghan fighters, which is a very important factual sort of retelling of the war in Afghanistan, because it was crucial for the occupation for the country in the fall of 2001. It was only through the participation of local fighters were they able to capture most of the urban settings in Afghanistan. The second thing going on here is General Flag is leadership in Washington not in Afghanistan, and he's calling in an airstrike on Afghan allies, which now in 2021 is so very ironic. I doubt this is an intentional reference to the thousands of Afghan civilians who lost their lives in America in airstrikes, but now it's hard to see this as anything but a reference to that. General Flag is the antagonist of Medal of Honor, not Al-Qaeda, not the Taliban. Make no mistake, those two factions are still the enemies, but 
They're just kind of gameplay obstacles, things to fire upon in the shooting range of levels. And modern military shooters across video games often prop up local or foreign populations as the grunts for players to engage with in gameplay, but intellectually or meaningfully, they're usually not the source of narrative antagonism. They're just the things that players actively kill. The conflict between Colonel Drucker and General Flagg is slightly more nuanced than the stories and the interactions of the American infantry. Our heroes call the enemy bad guys more often than Al-Qaeda or the Taliban. The developers here are, I guess, still wanting quote unquote grit in realism but instead have crafted a story that is often one-sided and simplistic. And we all know war is never ever a simple thing. We don't even get much nuance in our heroes because they're just really good at ready to bring the hurt and getting the bad guy. By 2010, the war in Afghanistan was very different from its attempt at a retelling the Medal of Honor. This game was released when then President Obama committed more American soldiers to the war. But also, this was part of the time now after the initial evasion, and then certainly by 2010, where the biggest problem was the occupation and nation building in Afghanistan. But of course, this is too complex for a simple, tiny, pea-sized brain of a gamer, so Medal of Honor decidedly sits when it was all about the invasion and not nation building, because that is more simple. All we had to do was shoot the bad guy. And so the significance of this game also kind of arose on me halfway through the campaign because I realized this was one of the few times I've ever played a game where I get to look at the Afghan countryside. In my actual life, will I ever get to visit and travel to Afghanistan? Will this game representation inform my perspective of this country? I'm going to try to not let it, but it's questions that I was wondering as I was playing. This reframed how I viewed Medal of Honor and to me re-emphasize some obligation for how game creators create and represent game worlds that are based on real world places, particularly the Middle East. Popular military FPS franchises show us so many places in the world, Bangkok, Uzbekistan, Iraq, but there are also some of the only games that show us that. Many games that dare to take place in the fiction of our real world are often through the eyes of Western military personnel. And so inevitably, it makes sense that we meet few citizens of Afghanistan in this game. Tariq in the opening sequence is one of the few non-violent interactions that we have with the local Afghan population. Even though the local Mujahideen played a significant role in the invasion of Afghanistan in the fall of 2001, we are going to ignore that and focus on American involvement. And as previously mentioned, they even write in a sick case of friendly fire to get the Afghan fighters out of the picture so we can focus on the sole patriotism of the American soldier. Some games of late seek to do this kind of reductive, all-American, pro-military thing a little bit better. Modern Warfare 2019 at least included one a local as one of the primary protagonists, but it still uses four locations as set pieces and not as worlds. Nothing in Medal of Honor feels lived in. It feels like a series of corridors where I can shoot Arabs, Chechens, and Pashtuns. This is a problem with almost all modern military shooters. Imagine if there was a commitment to building worlds, not firing yards. Maybe developers would have to then grapple with the realities of the war and the narrative propaganda that they're so readily spewing at us. And maybe there could be a realization that their depiction of Afghanistan should be more honest to its people and not something that's very questionably oriental and reductive. And perhaps as an aside, this is why I will forever love and cherish Assassin's Creed 1. Because you get to explore and interact with the people in the places of the Middle East as a local warrior, not a foreign invader. Medal of Honor thus ends with a rescue operation that is so brilliant now in 2021 that it, it both puts me in awe, makes me chuckle, and makes me cry all at the same time. It ends with a rescue operation that didn't quite make it in time. The camera sits one foot off the floor of the helicopter, looking down at the row of evacuated soldiers and two who have fallen and are now shrouded. And in the distance, we, th we see the beauty of an Afghan mountain, that beauty that hides the bad guys. Then there is this exchange here. This isn't how this ends. No. It isn't.
The withdrawal of Afghanistan happened only a few months ago. This game here was released in 2010. It's fascinating now to see that the ending of the game is actually how the war ended up ending. Second, in this ending, there is very little that is anti-war here. In fact, by this ending alone, you think there would be nothing problematic with war at all. Look at it. The dramatic swell of the music, the clenching of the dog tags, the aerial bombing of the enemy stronghold, the cliche gung-ho macho writing. You could put a Enlist Today card after this sequence and it could come straight from some sort of Western military advertisement. It's even questionable if you can make an anti-war game on its own. The only games that probably come close to entertaining these ideas are maybe Spec Ops The Line and This War Is Mine. And we could even argue there with filmmaker Francois Truffaut's thesis of to show a war is to ennoble it. There is no self-awareness present here. Everything in Medal of Honor 2010 is to ennoble it. I feel like the creators and the developers here never even had to tackle with the horrors of the Afghan invasion and occupation. It's now further compounded by the evacuation of Afghanistan now in 2021. 20 years later, this isn't how it ends. It's now a dark, twisted joke. So now, Medal of Honor 2010 is really only interesting as a video game because of how it reflects a collective thinking in the late 2000s that, indeed, America and the West will win in Afghanistan. Medal of Honor is cultural history, but on all other fronts, it's simply awful. Make no mistake, most modern military shooters, if not all of them, are all a part of this category. They all have these problems. They all don't develop believable worlds, they all misrepresent, none of them are anti-war, all of them really befuddle on how to make a proper local antagonist, instead make it about a CI plant or an American trader or some Russian oligarch, but gosh forbid you can actually tell a story about a local enemy opponent. Call of Duty, Battlefield, Rainbow Six, Ghost Recon, etc. They all do this. Medal of Honor here just happens to be the worst of them. And note here that I make deliberate use of the word modern. The history of war takes a really long time to unravel, to try to get right. Historical military shooters have a better chance of accurately depicting history and to say something more about war than just shooting the bad guys or disobeying the misinformed Washington general. There are still academic conversations going on about who is to blame for World War I, and that happened over a hundred years ago. Do you think that we can unravel the complexities of wars in the Middle East? as they're happening, as we're occupying, is really quite astounding. And games don't make any attempt to make that a central focus of the very narrative experience, that confusion, ambiguity, complexity. Instead, they think it's simple, shoot the bad guy. And I'm not saying that some of these games can't be fun. Fun isn't really a question here. We're having a conversation outside of the world of fun. We're having a conversation about what is the role of developers in accurately depicting war through the representative storytelling interaction of video games. And Medal of Honor just chalks that all up to shoot the bad guys. But what makes Medal of Honor particularly worse? Because if you are going to say, go get the bad guys, then we just have to make really damn sure that those real world bad guys we're talking about in video games are definitely not gonna be the ones that end up winning. <laughs>